Hey guys, this is Charles of Shutterstock. And so in this video tutorial, I'm gonna cover some things that you might wanna consider before building a video editing computer. I had a beefy video editing computer built a few years ago. And at that time, I just bought the most expensive hardware I could afford with my budget. However, in hindsight, I realize now there's a few things I could have done differently that would have improved my machine and saved me quite a bit of money. Translation, you guys get to learn from my mistakes. Now, just for the sake of comparison, think of your editing computer like your camera and the software you use like your camera lenses. I like this comparison because you're likely gonna use the same lenses on different cameras, just like you're gonna use the same software on different computers. And I still use some lenses that I first bought when I got into filmmaking. However, I hardly ever use the first camera I ever owned anymore, and that's really just because you can only upgrade those so far before they become outdated, much like computers. There will always be more efficient hardware coming out all the time, so that's something to always keep in mind. So my first consideration or really recommendation would be to make sure the motherboard you purchase supports the latest CPU chipset. Now this is something you can very easily overlook because it's really not the most exciting element of your computer, but remember the motherboard is really gonna be the glue that holds all this hardware together. And ensuring you have a motherboard that supports the latest CPU chipset, that's gonna give you more upgradeability and a longer life on your machine. And upgrading a computer's CPU is really the equivalent of upgrading a camera's image sensor. So before you build, make sure you search and check what the latest CPU generation is for Intel and AMD, and make sure the motherboard you purchased supports those chipsets. As of making this video in 2020, it is the 9th Gen Core series for Intel and the Ryzen 3000 line for AMD. Now along those same lines, Adobe products still heavily depend on the CPU. So I would have to recommend the CPU be the single component you invest the most money into. It's easy to get carried away on high-end graphics cards or excessive amounts of RAM, which is actually what I did, but After Effects and Premiere Pro are still gonna encounter bottlenecks if you have a slower CPU. If anything, again, just make sure your motherboard supports the latest CPU chipset. That way, if you wanna get kind of a mid-level CPU, you can upgrade it later if you want to. Next, research what hardware improves performance the most with the software you use and build your computer around that. As I've already mentioned, Adobe products heavily depend on the CPU, but you can check out Puget Systems. Puget, Puget? Okay. Check out the website for Puget Systems for some great case studies, recommendations, and information on what programs utilize what hardware the most. For example, the GeForce RTX 280 Ti costs about twice as much as the GTX 1070 Ti, but the actual performance difference in After Effects is just a few percent. So it may not be the most cost-effective option to spend double the amount on a graphics card. It's only gonna give you a very minimal increase in After Effects. Again, this all heavily depends on what programs you're using or other factors like third-party plugins. For example, when I had my machine built, I went with one large graphics card opposed to two mid-level cards. This is because I use the plugin Element 3D quite a bit. And for most of its functionality, it can only take advantage of one graphics card. So in my case, it was better to invest in one higher-end card opposed to two mid-level cards even though those two mid-level cards would have given me more combined graphics memory. I'll have a link for Puget Systems case studies on the blog post for this tutorial, so make sure you check that out. Now, I'd also recommend buying mid-level parts opposed to always buying the highest end. Obviously, this is gonna make your computer cheaper, lowering the initial cost, but you can then take that money you saved and reinvest that into future upgrades that come out down the road, or just use the money to buy another mid-level machine sooner. Which might sound a little bit crazy, but a mid-level machine a few years down the road will most likely be superior to a higher-end machine you can build right now. And that's what happened in my case. You could easily build a computer at the level of the one I have for half the price now, just a few years later. Also, mid-level parts tend to be more stable and work better with software. And this is really because they get more support from the manufacturer because more people have them. And that kind of makes sense. If you're buying the absolute highest end of something, not as many people are gonna have that. So most likely when there's errors, those are not gonna be resolved nearly as quickly as something that a lot of people have. The last thing I would consider would be using multiple SSDs opposed to just one large one. This provides a huge benefit to programs like After Effects and Premiere Pro. And this is actually what Puget Systems recommends for their builds as well. Have one SSD for your operating system and programs, a second one for your working media footage, and a third smaller one dedicated just for your media cache. Having each of these on their own SSD will help you greatly reduce bottlenecks. And this is something I didn't know about when I did my build. And it's so simple and just will give you a much better workflow. All right, guys, hopefully you found this information helpful. And if you have any tips for building a computer, 
Let us know in the comments. We'll definitely be checking those out. Also, make sure you check out Robbie's video on the Shutterstock channel where he walks through how to build a video editing computer step by step. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.